Hi, I'm Dr. Alan Copperman. I'm the Director of Infertility at Mount Sinai, and I'm also the Vice Chairman of Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Science. When we're looking at fertility, we really want to know whether the vaccine, any of the vaccines available, have an effect on the sperm, the eggs, or the embryo, or on implantation itself. When we look at the data on the sperm, we're looking at recent publications over the last few weeks that have looked at men before and after getting the vaccine and have shown no decrease in the count, the motility, or the morphology of, this, of the sperm. So we're convinced that the vaccine itself does not cause male infertility. We're also looking at ovarian reserve and ovarian function in women, and we've studied our internal data of women who have taken the vaccine and then gone through fertility cycles, and we're seeing no decrease in their egg production or their ability to make an embryo. And finally, we're looking at implantation of the embryo. So when we take a chromosomally normal embryo and put it into the uterus after somebody's been vaccinated, we're seeing no decrease at all in implantation. So we know that COVID-19 can be very dangerous to everybody and especially disproportionately to pregnant women. So we know the importance of preventing COVID-19 in pregnancy, but this is really reassuring as we gather data that the vaccine itself does not cause infertility and it does prevent severe disease. To date, there are nearly 3 billion vaccinations that have been given and we're not having reports of effects on pregnancy. So we know that COVID-19 disproportionately causes sickness and severe sickness in women who are pregnant. And we know the vaccine with over 90% efficacy prevents severe disease. But what we're hearing is that women who are pregnant and take the vaccine are healthy. In fact, what's amazing is that the woman's antibody response not only protects them throughout pregnancy, but when they deliver, there is some immunity that is transferred to the fetus, to the newborn baby. In fact, the earlier in pregnancy that a woman gets the vaccine, the more likely the baby's going to be to have some of that transferred immunity and not get sick if exposed to COVID-19. So we're convinced that the vaccine is preventing severe illness from mom, and we're now hypothesizing that it's preventing severe illness in the baby as well. The best time to get the vaccine is as soon as it becomes available. So people do have an allergic reaction at times, and it's very rare, but it's been reported. People feel fatigue. Some people get fever. But the, the side effects of the vaccine are short-lived. The immunity appears lasting. What we don't want to have is somebody that delays vaccination, gets sick, and then has other health care complications, including long COVID, which seems to last for six months, even a year in some people. So taking the vaccine before attempting pregnancy makes a lot of sense. We've had a lot of patients undergoing in vitro fertilization cycles in the middle of their IVF cycles getting the vaccine, and we're seeing no effect on outcome whatsoever. There's a lot of safety data that's been emerging from around the world of women who are taking the vaccine while they're pregnant. There are registries, and convincingly, they're showing safety and effectiveness of the vaccine in pregnancy. So the World Health Organization, the American College of OBGYNs, the Society of Maternal Fetal Medicine Specialists, they're all saying that, there's, that a woman should check with her physician, but there is no contraindication to getting the vaccine while pregnant. There's no real data suggesting that one of the vaccines is better than the other vaccines. We know that the effectiveness against preventing any disease seems a little bit higher in the mRNA vaccines, uh, the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines than in the Johnson & Johnson. But all of the vaccines that have been approved by the FDA under emergency use authorization have 99% have efficacy in preventing severe disease and death. So I would say any vaccine that's available should be the vaccine that one takes. Uh, in a world in which social media is largely a part of our daily routine, patients are particularly susceptible to misinformation derived from unreliable sources. So we have to be able to tell fake news from real news. We have to be able to turn to authorities, turn to literature, turn to ran randomized controlled studies, turn to our societies that govern our physicians and our organizations to give us guidance on what's truth and what's not truth. I'm glad that we're having this conversation today. I truly believe that thought should be given for everybody to be getting the vaccine right now. We're saving lives. There are billions of vaccines that have been given. We're getting safety and efficacy data from around the world. 
millions of lives are going to be saved. It, this vaccine does not appear to cause difficulties with fertility. It appears to be safe in women and the lasting antibody immunity seems to be transmitted to children. So this is a major breakthrough of science and this is going to keep us safe. This is an era of patients having access to information. We need to empower patients with the ability to ask the questions, but we also need to provide the right answers. So patients should always feel free to ask their providers questions like, is this safe for me? Which is the vaccine that's best for me? When should I take the vaccine? And it's also important to turn to trusted sources, society guidelines, World, World Health Organizations, the FDA. There's a lot of great information out there that'll help us fight back against this pandemic and will take care of us and our families.